Imagine making over $2 million just by selling one house. Well, that is what this guy did. And in this video, I'm gonna be asking New York's top realtors, is it easy to get rich selling real estate? Is it as lucrative as it seems? And what's it like dealing with the world's wealthiest people? Make sure you watch to the end for a private tour of some of New York's most expensive real estate listings on the market. Starts here, right? This block, 64th Park left. $20 million house in the corner. Bernie Madoff's penthouse was up there. Oh, in that building? Yeah. Before we tour these New York mega homes, let's go and hear about the real estate agent stories and how they even got in the position to list these million dollar properties in the first place. How much does Sirhan sell per year? This year, I think we'll do 2.7 billion. We are probably grossing $500 million a year. How much did you generally sell last year? Last year, my sales were over 100 million. I've been a real estate agent since 2008 uh, in New York. My first year, I made like nine grand. My second year, I made like 50. Third year was like, 150 so every year i tried to like double it from there i built a sales team a big one there was like 65 agents between here california south florida and the hamptons my last year as a team we did so for a billion dollars in sales that year and that was 2019 2020 i decided to blow up my whole life and start my own company basically kind of creating a content to training to commerce business for real estate we will sell this apartment it's 45 million dollars and we will sell it through tiktok and the whole company does that last year was our first year we did I think it's like 1.4 billion our first year. My first sale was a $230,000 co-op on the Upper East Side. And my first year in real estate, I made $7,300. $7,300, try living on that in New York. 2020, you sold over $100 million and most agents make 3% or 1.5%, I guess, with the brokerage? 6% and then it's co-broke. So yeah, it's 3%. Three and, three, and then you split it with the brokerage? Correct. So Han, so over $100 million, that's at least $2 million you're making. Some, that's what someone would guess. That's what someone would guess. So, how much did you make in your first year? Like how much did you sell and how much did you make? Like 80,000 bucks. That's pretty good for your first year. So when you sell like a $10 million plate, how much does like an agent make on that? Like 45%. 400, $500,000. And how long does that take to sell? A week to a year. So uh, this house, for example, we had on the market for 35 days. It's pretty quick turnaround for it. Fantastic. What do you think separates someone from an, an average realtor from the 1%? I think I've just been absolutely relentless in my pursuit of success. I saw who my competition was. They're already rich. They already went to the most expensive private school ever. They already have this incredible network and they're doing business that's just coming through their parents. I have none of that. How do I do this? When they're all in the Hamptons or sleeping or taking time off because they have nothing lighting a fire under their own ass. Every single day, I'm gonna creep a little bit closer to passing them. Even when I hire new agents now, the ones that have great networks that have been you know, wealthy or come from successful families for a long time, they'll be good, but it's gonna be very hard for them to be great. What's separating the people that are seven figure, multi-million dollar year salaries versus the people who you know, 50,000 less or nothing? What separates? I mean, you, you think about it, at least in New York, the story was grandma's just gonna go represent someone just because it's easy. They have a friend in the building, they're gonna go sell the apartment. Then they're in and out of the business. This is my career. This is not short game. This is the long game. 17 years, I don't foresee myself changing careers anytime soon. So I think that mindset, creating relationships for the long term will cause, you know, like my earning power and my market to grow. What else do you think separates you know, someone who's a top broker versus like people who just make okay money or give up? I think for me and my business, I like organically like to meet people. I love to volunteer. I do a lot of volunteer work. That's how I've met a lot of clients because you're seeing these people every week. Um, and it's not like you're going there and trying to push your business and be like sales pitchy. Like I'm in real estate, hire me, I'm great. Like if you're into cars, join a car club or go to a car show. Surround yourself with other people that love the same things and do the same things and you can kind of make your business out of that and get clients that way. So if someone to make a million dollars in real estate, what would you recommend for them to do? I would say do not immediately go into real estate investing. I think a lot of people think that that's where you make money. I think that's also where you can lose a significant amount of money. For me, brokerage is a no risk investment. Your time is what you're investing into creating relationships for people that are gonna pay you to help them do a real estate transaction that you have nothing to do with. You don't have to buy the glue or the nuts or the bolts. There's no capital investment. And that's what's always like set me free because the risk is your time, but the reward can be endless. How do you connect with the seller or the buyer in general? Our day-to-day -day blocking and tackling is like old school. It's cold calling. Most of the time I get told to off. These cold calls are warm calls now because they're constantly calling the same people over the years. It will ultimately lead to a sale. So if someone's looking to build their network, how would you go about it today? Feel rejection. It's just, it's inevitable you're gonna get rejected and that's okay. There's a guy in my office, he started like a year ago, 
I never did this and kudos to him. He's knocking on doors. This is like pretty much unheard of and he's doing it in, in an area in Brooklyn and he's had a lot of success doing it. What are some of the weirder ways people have gotten wealthy that you've learned? Or... There was someone we were shopping with for a while. They were one of the biggest manufacturers of screws. They ultimately bought like a $35 million piece of real estate. Just a little screw. What are some of the weird ways that people have gotten wealthy? I had a client who, I'll just say generically, they were in the diaper company <laughs> of like invention of diapers. And then you'll get people who come in and they're looking at like $10 million properties and they're TikTok stars. Really? We just sold a, an apartment for $21 million to a guy that hit Bitcoin at the right time and sold it at the exact right time when it was at like, the day it was at 65,000, he emptied. New millionaires are created every single day in the world now, which isn't something that should get you down. It should be something that excites you. Can we get a tour of this place? Yeah, let's do it. Right? So let's actually step out in front. It starts here, right? This block, 64th, Park Lex. $20 million house in the corner. Bernie Madoff's penthouse was up there. This is 20 feet wide. You have three windows across. These are the little things that I look at when valuing a property or walking clients through. Okay. I will say this house was renovated about 11 years ago. So from a finished quality, um, everything is still in fantastic condition. Um, so this kitchen in particular is uh, designed by a guy named Christopher Peacock, based out of London, high-end name, so it should then garner more money. On this particular level, you've got dining in the front and living in the rear. Not a big bar, but I like the fact that there's a little surf up station right here. Yeah, so I'm the bartender, so I, I would just be working in here. Like. <laughs> so this was then designed as office and kind of media room. This passes all the way through. So this is another oh, kind this of living is cool. space, right? So this is where you make your money sitting at the office. You pass through and this is where you watch your, uh, your YouTube videos. And you guys staged this? This house was staged. How much does staging cost for, for to see? Um, this house, $60,000. What kind of person can afford a $45 million place? Most people that would buy something like this probably pay cash. You know, second from that, like your down payment, if you wanted to do 20%, you know, is immediately gonna be $9 million, which means your monthly costs are gonna be absurd. It's gonna be like a million dollars a year. This is the Steinway building here, which I think is beautiful. It's the best skyscraper in the world. This $45 million apartment is unbelievable. It has an original Picasso just chilling in the hallway, a self-flushing toilet worth over $6,000, and a bathroom bigger than most people's apartments. But what was even more shocking was how much was being spent on booze alone. This is $40,000 bottle of wine. So debrief of the day, we went to an 11 million, a six and a half million, a almost $50 million place. I just think it was impressive that a lot of these people started out with making nothing, and then through sticking with it through over 10 years, they're now all making seven figures a year. And so for me, for everybody out there, it's like, whether it's real estate, whether it's tech, whatever it is, making content, just find the thing you really enjoy doing. Yes, it's gonna be a little bit of a struggle early on. $7,300, try living on that in New York. But you stick with it, like AppSumo.com. Eventually, real estate, whatever that is, you can make a lot of money. If you like this video, you are going to love this video right up here, where I go up to yacht owners and ask what they do for a living and get some business and life advice for people like you and me. Uncle Noah loves you, and I'll see you out there. Pew, pew.